Hey guys, hope you're doing well. This is Dennis here. I uh, wanted to do a quick video for you. Uh, if you're watching this, chances are you are probably looking to find out how to repeat a public hotspot. And typically hotspots are, whether they're free or paid, if that comes through your ISP, they are either secured or not secured, meaning they either require password or don't. Um, and the main piece behind this um, that you should know about is the only reason or the only way that you're going to be able to do this is if you essentially have a router that would allow you to bypass the captive portal. Now, what's a captive portal? Um, essentially, it's a page that pops up when you try to connect to an ISP or a hotspot that asks you for uh, maybe your email address or your name and email address, or maybe it's a social media uh, portion of it that you have to connect to be able to access uh, the internet, I know that I ran into that in Books A Million a couple weeks ago. Um, if you're in a coffee shop, it might pop up a page where you have to enter your name or something like that. Um, airports have it as well. And that's, that's, the, that's the page that pops up that you have to be able to get around. Um, and typically, the routers or the regular routers that people have can't bypass that. And because they can't essentially get that page to pop up and authenticate that page, they can't connect to the signal or the hotspot, right? So they can't basically extend that around the house. So the way that you're going to be able to repeat this signal, whether that's free or paid through your ISP, um, is to have a router that's capable of bypassing the captive, um, the captive portal. So I'll just jump right into it. I, again, I'm making this video because I took uh, about two weeks to get this set up from start to finish. Did tons of research, looking for answers. I didn't see any videos of anyone explaining anything about this. Um, so I decided, you know what, let me make a quick video. I figured it out. Uh, let me see if I can help some people out uh, so they can find what they need in one place um, rather than jumping in forums and trying to figure out a bunch of stuff and buying products that are not going to work for them like I did. So really quickly, again, since you only need a, a router that would allow that capability, um, I went ahead and bought this particular router. I initially bought an extender and I knew about a couple days after I ordered it um, on Amazon that it wasn't going to work. Now it was like back to square one. I'll keep it, but it wasn't going to help me do what I needed to do. So did more research, uh, figured out that I needed a router that had specific features to let me do what I needed to do. And um, so I essentially found this one. Uh, I think you can see it. it's called the GLAR750. And this is from GLINet. Um, the reason why I went with this one, just, just to throw out a couple specs out there, uh, just to have it in the video. Um, so this particular router has or allows up to 300 megabits per second. Um, it has dual band, so 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz, which is good for kind of like future proofing stuff. You don't want to get stuff that's too outdated or might not work well with maybe future um, devices that you get. So I wanted to make sure that something I got had that in place. And it also allows you to basically use a, a VPN. Um, and if you don't know what a VPN is, basically a, a server that allows you to run your traffic through it, kind of a middleman to kind of hide what you're doing. It's a better way of sur uh, kind of surfing the internet, uh, more secure, and just to keep your your ISP from seeing what you're, you're doing and that kind of stuff. And that'll come into play uh, a little later in the video. So I got this particular device. This worked for me, and I kind of just want to go over a couple things about it. Um, but again, you need a router that allows you to bypass that. The reason why this works is because it allows you to do what's called MAC cloning or MAC address cloning. So if you don't know what a MAC address is, essentially it's a serial number tied to your uh, network card that basically uh, it's an identifier that an ISP or maybe you know any router that you connect to um, will know that that device is connected to the internet or that particular uh, connection so they can see how many devices who's on it you know they can see um, what traffic is going through it how much like how much bandwidth they're using uh, and they can control what sites you use and they can throttle stuff so that's uh, all that is done using your MAC address so typically if you let's say you connected to your phone and you had a, a username and password if you pay for an ISP that allows you to use their public hotspots which is uh, my particular case, and I'll get into that. But if you have, uh, even if it's a free hotspot, let's say a McDonald's or something, um, they can see your MAC address. 
Um, but if you're trying to, let's say, repeat a free um, public hotspot, this is going to let you do that. Um, and if you want to go the MAC address way, this will allow you to do that. So the cloning, the way that works is, let's say you connect to your, to the, let's say, McDonald's hotspot using your phone, right? And you're, you're connected to the internet, you're using the internet, and it's working fine. They've tracked your MAC address, and now they, they're allowing you to connect to that internet because when you first connected to it on your phone, it probably popped up a page where you needed to go through that captive, captive portal where there's check off terms and conditions or something like that. And now you authenticated that page, and now they let you use the internet, right? So basically, you're trying to duplicate a, a, a device onto that network by saying, hey, this is the device that was the first one to authenticate, so don't ask me about this captive portal page thing, you know, right? Because you already authenticated. So typically, when you, once you already authenticate, it won't ask you to, to basically do it again. And that's the key there. Um, lots of routers, again, don't have that capability. So if you try to repeat a signal with a regular router that doesn't have particular features that allow you to bypass the captive portal, it's not going to work because the captive portal page will never come up, which means you can't connect to the access point, which means you can't repeat that signal in your house. So you can use a MAC address uh, cloning feature of this. It's very simple to use, and that might work for you if, 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 if the access point that you're trying to connect to is looking at MAC addresses. And typically they are, maybe not 100%, but they definitely are. But there are some ISPs that will ask you for a username and password, right? So I have an ISP that gives you a username and password, allows you to use your public hotspots. So I guess free, free because you're not paying additional, but you paid for the service, the internet service, so you have access to it. Um, so it asks you for a username and a password, um, but it doesn't have an actual captive portal page meaning that I was able to connect to two out of the three access points that are around me, or hotspots, I should say, that are around me. Um, but I was able to bypass the ones that have the captive portal page. And there are ways to get around uh, the ones that ask you for using the password. I just didn't go that complete route. Uh, I played around with it for a little bit, but because it worked for the other two, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to mess around with it too much. It's basically the same company, but they have three different access points, same source, but just different names. Um, so since I was able to get to the other ones, I didn't really have to go down that route, but you need this router. So this is half the battle right here, is knowing what device and why. Um, so it, just by having this particular router, you can basically get this done. You're halfway through, through the, uh, down, the, down the journey. So um, a couple other things that I wanna mention. Um, Tips. So when you're trying to set this up, so let's say you have a hotspot around your house. It's called, I don't know, DC, right? This hotspot, and you're trying to repeat that signal around your house. You would connect to that signal with this router. You would configure this router. You would sign in to the router's um, dashboard and configuration settings using the, um, the IP address that comes with the router, and it'll tell you um, what to enter in the actual manual that you get, or probably even on the box itself. Um, and you would sign in there and you would try to connect to it. You would enter username and password if you have it. If you don't, you try to connect to it anyway, set it up. Um, and set it up as WISP mode, W-I-S-P mode. This is a big one because um, I was doing what's called WDS. And I won't get into the specifics of it. Um, it's, it can get a little complicated. And again, this router has, just for those that are more advanced, has lots and lots of features. Um, it allows you to basically connect to tons of different VPN companies using OpenVPN has open WRT and lead and a bunch of stuff. If you're more advanced, I'm not. I just want to mention in case you're more advanced and you're wondering if it has that kind of stuff. So if you're advanced and you want to do like hobby stuff, you can do the basic stuff and go crazy with it if you want to. But um, yeah, so if you connect to this device, make sure you're using uh, WISP mode. And that's something you would use for public hotspots and even like hotels and this sort of thing. One other thing to mention too, I believe you can do this with this particular router. I have not. I actually haven't had it that long. Um, I'll probably try it when I go to a hotel, but I've read um, about this particular product that you can, let's say you're in a hotel and you're using, let's say you pay for two days worth of internet, right? Hotels will typically charge you per device that, you, that connects to their internet. So you could essentially connect to this, connect this to the hotel, the hotel's access point, and then connect all your devices to this so that it looks like there's only one device connecting when really there's several devices, right? So this is another reason why you would use this. If you try it in a hotel, 
you would run into the captive portal issue as well. So you would need something like this. So it's essentially a travel travel router, powerful little travel uh, router. Um, so that's that. Um, something else to mention. Um, I actually was able to repeat the signal and it worked perfectly fine for me. But an issue you'll run into if you use things like Netflix and, and Hulu and maybe Kodi or something like that. I don't know. Um, and you have a Chromecast connected to a TV and you're streaming from a, maybe a computer or a phone. You're going to run into an issue where your ISP, because it's a, it's a free public hotspot. They don't want tons of people juicing the hotspot and you know running their server costs and that stuff. You can, um, you can actually set up uh, a VPN with this one this router because if you don't the ISP will be able to see that you're streaming from Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and they're gonna throttle it so much to the point where it's unusable so typically when I tried it it would work for I don't know maybe a couple minutes on Netflix if I was streaming to the Chromecast and it would just it would be done but when I tried it on my computer with the VPN that I have it would work perfectly fine on my computer so I knew it wasn't the the internet wasn't slow or anything it was just that the ISP can see that you're streaming um, essentially through Netflix and they can throttle those particular sites or they just, just can see the amount of data that's running through that device and throttle it that way. So the way to get around that is to get a VPN. I use uh, VPN.ht. I recommend it. I, it's about five bucks a month. Uh, super cheap and affordable. Um, and one thing to mention too, the, the, the file that you download for your you know setup for the computer or or an app for your phone, it's very very easy to use. I don't like things where you have to configure your stuff and everything just gets so complicated. Um, super easy to use. You just enter username and password that you get once you subscribe, um, and you select the location so you can kind of you know if you want to look like you're in Australia, you can do that. Um, but that's important because that's the only way that you're going to be able to uh, get around the throttling issues when you're streaming those types of services, you would essentially get a VPN.ht subscription or anything else that you want and download um, what's called an uh, .ovpn file uh, from their website that they'll give it to you, they'll give to you and then you can upload it to the back end uh, when you go into the IP address of your router and you can upload it and it's going to ask you for username and password that you use for your VPN and then boom, you're done. Um, the next step above that though, um, is configuring your DNS settings. Um, you can use, um, if you use your regular ISP ones, if you don't configure, it's going to use the default ones from your ISP. So I wouldn't use that because it's still not going to work. You'll still get throttled. Um, so you can change it to either Google's DNS. So you can enter the Google's IP address there, which is on the um, VPN.ht website as well. Um, or you can use Open DNS, or you can ask for the DNS IP addresses of um, your particular VPN service. So I actually asked VPN.ht for theirs a couple days ago because I just got this set up um, and their servers are under maintenance. So I actually don't have it. But if you just at least want it to work in the meantime, um, be able to repeat everything and then also have your stream uh, work fine to Netflix and, and Chromecast and that kind of stuff, um, you can use the open DNS ones. And again, that's also on the website in the same article. Um, on the vpn.ht website if you decide to go that route. Um, I will post a link in the description to where to get this exactly. I paid, I actually looked at the price yesterday as of the making of this video. I think it was 45 bucks that I paid and I think it says it's $11 shipping. Um, but this is very, very cool because then you can use this in any situation where you're connected to a, a public hotspot whether it's secured or not, because it has its own uh, firewall built in and it'll keep you more secure when you're searching. And then of course, like I mentioned, you can just install the VPN. So every time um, this connects to the internet, that particular ISP that you're trying to repeat or access point, um, it'll automatically lower your VPN settings so that everything you do is secure and you don't have to mess around with it. And then you can basically repeat any free hotspot signal um, and do a bunch of other things if you're more advanced. So again, I'll put the link in the description for this particular device um, so that you know exactly which one it is. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. I might make a second video if you guys need to about the settings and how to configure in the back end. Again, it's very simple, just WISP mode. You can upload your VPN file, download it from your whatever website that you're using 
uh, or, or service you're using for your VPN service. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, leave me any comments if you have any questions. I'll uh, I'll definitely comment and reply back and try to help you guys out. Again, the purpose of this video was just to have everything in one place, let you know why you needed particular things, um, and which particular device to, to download or to buy if you wanted to go this this route. Um, because there was nothing else online, it took me a while to set it up. It was like a little bit a little project of mine. I was even on the roof. Um, seeing if I could repeat a signal from the McDonald's down the road as a little project, but that would have been a lot bigger. I was looking into uh, directional antennas and all that stuff, and I, I have a two-floor home, and I couldn't, uh, I still couldn't see the, the the McDonald's with a clear line of sight, even though it was about a mile away. So anyway, hope that helped. Uh, again, uh, like if you like the video, thumbs it down if you don't like the video, um, and comment, and I'll try to help you guys out. And uh, stay tuned for a couple more videos. And again, if I do make a second video, video you'll see it on the um, I'll have the caption pop up on this particular video, which you can click on and take you to the second video. So you can see the settings, but it's very super simple. So I uh, hope you get it to work. And if you do, comment below and let me know if that helped you out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.